Hi everyone, thank you for coming out tonight. It's been such a hot day, so hopefully it's a little bit cooler in here. Um, so we're lucky to be joined by Bill Patton tonight and he is um, the serv uh, service manager? Field service. Field service manager. And he's been with uh, Recycle BC since it started in 2014. So he's going to do a presentation and then afterwards he'll have time for a question and answer. So please save your questions till the end. And thank you. Let's give him a warm welcome. Thank you. So uh, I'm really uh, excited about being here. It's not something I normally do is give presentations. So, uh, but what I, what I hope that we both walk away is that, is that I help uh, everyone to better understand the program, what we're about, and and hopefully answer your questions of specifics about material and where it goes, uh, and and where it goes, and actually how it gets recycled. So um, I'm going to show uh, a, a presentation, which will take about 10 or 15 minutes, and then and then we can either take questions about what I showed already, or then I can walk you through some of the material, what is and isn't acceptable, and and then answer more questions. So we can see how that goes. Probably after I, I give the presentation, we'll answer some questions, but the questions really that we'll save it about the material later. If that sounds good. So Recycle BC, we're a nonprofit. Um, we were established in, in British Columbia. There's uh, 28 what they call stewardship agencies, which are uh, essentially producers that bring materials into the marketplace are responsible for bringing them back. So whether it's uh, bottles or tires or light bulbs or electronics or, or computers, they're responsible for bringing it back. So packaging and printed paper was brought into the, into the stewardship agencies in 2014. Um, so we essentially la launched a program across the province, which is a series of curbside, which is um, the big changes that happen in Grand Forks, uh, multi-families, and our depot program, so especially in remote areas, and a combination of, of those. So I'm going to show a video that talks about that, and then I'll talk a, a bit more detail. <coughs> Do this properly. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to turn line here and then I'll start it again. We're a nonprofit organization responsible for residential packaging and printed paper recycling throughout British Columbia. Okay, I'll just start that we again. We ensure packaging and printed paper is collected from. Finding ways to preserve our environment. We are a nonprofit organization responsible for residential packaging and printed paper recycling throughout British Columbia. We ensure packaging and printed paper is collected from households and recycling depots, sorted and recycled responsibly. To shift recycling costs away from homeowners, our program is funded by businesses like retailers, manufacturers, and restaurants that supply packaging and printed paper to BC residents. By recycling more efficiently, we can be part of the solution to keep BC beautiful. Together, we can make a difference. Find out what you can recycle at RecycleBC.ca. So, some things about our program is we're essentially across the province. We have uh, uh, depots in Stewart is our furthest west in Fort Nelson and all the way to the Alberta border. And we collect 186,000 tons of recycling, uh, servicing 1 .7, over 1.7 million households. And 97% of households have, have access to depot services, so within a 45 minute drive of where they live. And over 3.1 million uh, British Columbians are serviced by us. And we have 156 communities. A number of our communities, like for example, uh, Grand Forks area, or what we call Kootenai Boundary, had originally, we used to pay them per household. 
now we've taken it over as a direct service. So we've hired uh, Alpine to do the actual collection, but, but we actually, we're responsible for the promotion, the education, and the, and the quality of material. So as I said, we're a nonprofit. We're not with the government. We're, we're um, the government has mandated us. We had to have a, 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 a plan put together for how we could addre address the issues. We're responsible for bringing back 75% of the recycling that is put into the marketplace. We're res responsible for bringing back. So before our program launched across the province, um, only 63% of the material was, that was put into the marketplace of packaging and printed paper was actually recycled, 63%. So our mandate was um, to bring that up to 75%. And, and we've achieved that. So we are able to bring back 75% of what gets put into the, into the marketplace is brought back. So across North America or even across the world, it's, it's a really uh, strong success story for that. So, and, and especially in, in three years that we've come up from 63%, uh, from which was quite high to start with, is to 75%. And we're funded by uh, 1,200 businesses. So the policy is any business that is, uh, has two or more locations, uh, is is required well every every business in in the province is required to register into our program however if they're a small business then they then they don't have to pay into our program so essentially um, the larger businesses two or more locations that and I don't know the threshold but make certain amount of millions of dollars or generate several thousand tons that they put in the marketplace are required to, to bring it back. Okay, so does everyone follow that kind of funding? So essentially they pay us and we, we they give us money and we make sure that, that it happens. So we're a BC centric organization. We have our own board of directors that's uh, part of BC and so on. And the majority of our material actually gets recycled in, in British Columbia. So we used to be called Multi-Material BC, if you heard of us. Not many people had heard of us. In March of this year, we just rebranded to Recycle BC, which hopefully you'll see a lot more because we realized nobody knew who, or, who, who we were. And, and to me, hopefully Recycle BC with our logo gives you an idea of what we're about, that we're in the, the packaging and printed paper recycle. So there's, because we're a fairly small organization, we, we're allowed to be very flexible, and it's something that we've been able to do. We've taken on a number of projects where businesses are saying, we want to do more in the recycling, what can we do? So we've partnered with different businesses to work through some of their, uh, their um, products to make them more efficient. And an example that I can give is uh, uh, Tim Hortons has, a, has a, uh, uh, a cup called an eco cup. And essentially what it is, is it's a, it's a coffee that they can, you can make at home. And before it was a combination of plastic, which was recyclable, organic coffee, and then some material that was not recyclable. Working with us, they made sure that it could, was effective in the marketplace. They were able to take, um, essentially, you can get it, you take it, you make your coffee at home, and then you separate one piece that's all organic that you can put in your organic bin, and another piece that's fully recyclable. So it's very simple to do, done. And, and, that, and that has brought uh, interest of other businesses that have been trying for you know five years to get Ontario on board or other provinces or whatever or places in, in the US. And if you look at the US in particular, the US recycling market is really, really suffering. Because, th I mean, there's big, big uh, cities like Houston, Texas is suffering where they're, they're are almost not able to give recycling because it's not efficient enough. 
And so a program like ours, a lot of places in the US and in Canada are looking at the BC model as an effective model to uh, ideal, hopefully lower, lower taxes. And I, I'm from Squamish and starting uh, in October, we're gonna get be part of the Recycle BC program, so hopefully my taxes will go down. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> or at least it'll go to somewhere other than recycling anyways. <clears throat> so the, a lot of people are very interested in what happens to the recycling. And this is a, an overview video that will explain a lot of it. And if you want, I can get into some of the nuances of it. Or I can show another video that shows a, an actual uh, our program going through. So this is an overview. Um, but essentially, in a very nutshell, the material is separated. And once material is separated into the different plastics or the different metals or the different papers, then they can now be recycled back into those. Anything that uh, contaminates that, that shouldn't be recycled, can end up making, instead of this thing being recycled and this thing being recycled, if they're mixed, potentially nothing is recycled which is obviously to no one's benefit. And all these, all these videos I should mention are, are on our website if you want to learn more about them. Uh, yeah. <coughs> what happens to my recycling? Step one, when you set your materials out at curbside, take them to your multifamily recycling location or to a depot, they are collected by a specialized truck that transports your packaging and printed paper to a recycling facility. Most materials collected in the collection system are multi-stream, which means that residents sort their materials. Difficult to manage materials such as glass, plastic foam, plastic bags, and overwrap are collected separately at depots so that they do not mix with other recyclables and spoil their recyclability. Step two. Materials are transported to a material recovery facility and put onto a conveyor belt where they enter the sorting process. Step three, the materials travel along a series of conveyor belts where large non-recyclable items are first manually removed. The process then continues using equipment such as fiber separators, magnetic separators, optical sorters, and any curves to separate the different materials into their designated categories. A fiber screen separates heavy and light material using star-shaped steel discs. Paper and envelopes fall below the screen, while larger cardboard is propelled over. A magnetic separator is suspended over a conveyor belt and runs continuously to remove steel cans from the stream of materials traveling below. An eddy current causes aluminum cans, pie plates, etc. to be repelled into a separate collection bin. An optical sorter uses infrared light to detect material compositions. It then uses an air jet to sort materials. There can be many optical sorters in a sorting facility. Step 4. The final sort of materials, such as plastic jugs, aluminum cans, steel cans, newspaper, cardboard, etc. are bailed and prepared for shipping. Step 5. Once a full truckload of sorted bales is ready, the bales are shipped off to material remanufacturers to be processed into new materials. Plastics are shredded, washed, and palletized. Paper is pulped and pressed into fiber. Metals are shredded, smelted, and rolled into sheets, wire, or bar, and more. Step 6. Some materials are recycled back to their original purpose, like the plastic bottles and paper products, or <coughs> products life cycle. Others are transformed into completely new products like furniture, car bumpers, and shelving. Some materials, such as steel and aluminum cans, have no limit to the number of times they can be recycled. Using recycled material reduces the need to harvest virgin resources from the earth and promotes sustainable manufacturing. Step 7. Once the new products and packaging are created, they are packaged and sold back to you. 
Your materials are recycled into any of these products, plus many more. So I can show the, the other video if people are interested in that to explain uh, sort of uh, actual pictures of, of, of how things go through the material. Would that be of interest or not? No? no? Okay. So I really get into that because I find it you know, fascinating how we're able to recycle things. So. But it's on our website if you want to know more. So basically that was the presentation that I have. Um, and then I can get into materials, but maybe I can answer some questions um, now before we get into some of the materials. Sir? Bill, uh, you'd indicated this, uh, you're a nonprofit organization, and this is, is funded by the companies that participate in it. Right. Um, in the past, here in Grand Forks, we have paid the city to do this. Can I expect the city to reduce our garbage pickup charges? You have to talk to the city about that. Doesn't it may seem to make sense though? Well, I, now I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe the recycling before us was, was run by the regional district. And that is also true, yes. Okay, so okay. so I really don't know how the funding works here. But if you're doing it now and you're self-funding, somebody before else we, paid for it before. We used to pay them before, yeah, so we used to pay them Forty dollars a household before a year. So, if you want to ask them that question, no, well, I think a reasonable question to ask. Yeah. So I, I, I do know that that there are organize I, I do know that there are municipalities that have lowered their taxes since our program came in. Okay. So I can't speak for the regional district here. Uh, question two, and I'm sorry, I know there's other questions here. Uh, I recently had the unfortunate incident of having to return or take to our local depot of which we only have one in Grand Forks an item that I had purchased from Walmart right. I had the slip in my hand that said the recycle fee on this right on the on my bill was a, was a weed eater right okay the local depot here wouldn't take it right so I'm how, how about I talk about materials later okay so we don't any of our materials there are no fees on. So the specifically what you might have paid for is actually the weed eater it's itself and not the packaging. And that's possible, it was an electrical yeah. appliance, yeah. so that certainly could be yeah. the case. Yes. So I use so there's a I use an app called Recyclepedia or there's a website and a phone number, uh, RCBC, Recycling Council of BC, and they know where everything is recycled. Like that is able to recycle, they'll either know where it should properly go or why not. So I, I don't know the specifics of that. I know that if you bought it here, that the packaging that it went on should be part of our report. I can't tell you, just on the bill there was a yeah. recycle fee. Yeah. So yeah, so a lot of the electronics and other ones have eco fees and that is a, a different <coughs> model than ours. So you're not part of that? recycle arrangement at all. No, that's a different stewardship program. Yeah. So you okay. don't recycle everything? Like Just packaging I, and printed paper. In particular this morning, I had the pleasure of meeting right. your gentleman. Right, actually I, I might have been me that did that. I don't so, know. So Has if, a recycle if, if I can wait for the, the uh, well, for the materials. Well, you find it over there. Yeah, actually I, I do have something almost exactly like that. Is that all right? I'm mean, happy to talk about it now, but I... No, no, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Washing, uh, washing costs in, involved with uh, cans. It's, it's Sometimes it takes an awful lot of hot water and a lot right. of water uh, for meat cans, particularly. Right. Why can't you do that uh, pressure hose? You, know, you mean in our pressure hose in our and your program? recycling thing, yeah. Um, so, so you're talking a, a can like this. Yeah. So, essentially, the, the problem with it is it might take a, a while till it gets done. It, and if you think about how how the material is, that um, you know, 
what what a lot of people say is if you're going to wash your you know in a dishwasher or whatever and you've got some spare you could put it there whatever we just ask for it to be quickly rinsed out okay i've got some more questions later on. okay sounds good so i live in an apartment building so i'm not sure if you know but i don't know the details of, about that exactly for for this area unfortunately okay. so far there's nothing set up then yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. So you're just specifically. covering materials and like. Uh, yeah. So recycled. just the the changes. So before the the plastic bags to the to the uh, bins. So I'm not sure exactly about multifamily, but but I, but I can give you my card and I can find that out. I really I don't know all the details, the nuances of here specifically. <coughs> Make sure that I'm understanding correctly. Uh, you have taken over from MMBC. No, we are MMBC. We you just changed MMBC. our name. Yeah. <laughs> well, I my understanding was that it was not just a British Columbia organization. I understood that there was MMBC Manitoba, MMBC Ontario. So yes, you're right. Or MM right. Ontario. So the, and they're they're so we're MMBC. There's MMSW, which is Saskatchewan. There's one in Manitoba. There's one in Ontario. There's a, a different hybrid in Quebec. Um, so there's now, so if you want to get in the nuances of ours, so um, just last week, our, um, our annual report was, was published that gets into a lot of the nuances. But we, we, are, we are originally were an independent provincial aid, uh, agency and we had an umbrella organization called the Canadian Stewardship Services Alliance and we still we still so they had their own board of directors and whatever we split off from them and we have our own board of directors and we always were essentially independent we do use them for accounting um, for they have scientists there that help us figure out how to deal with plastics whatever so we use them but instead of um, essentially we pay them for everything that we do now so we are an independent um, BC organization and, and part of our changing our name we still our legal name is still <coughs> multi-material BC we're a registered nonprofit in in British Columbia but we are a, but we, cha we changed our um, uh, resident-facing name to Recycle BC, but our legal name is still Multi-Material okay. BC. Didn't the province of BC make that mandatory in the first place? We had lots of very good recycling programs that covered a lot more than paper and packaging prior to the government changing the rules. Such um, as, such as what? Such as the rules? No. Uh, no. So, such so, as what was recycled? Yeah multiple types of plastics uh, bags uh, containers things with the uh, numbers on them that right. we went by number right. which took care of just about everything right. in the household and so, that so, got changed when mnbc became but, that so that's probably true but i well, i will say this that um the material might have been taken away from you mm -hmm. but i'm not sure that it was actually recycled before and I can't speak totally for that, but I, there are things that were taken before that could not have been recycled. What we take gets recycled. Can you tell me again where the places are that this is processed, but do you pick what is picked up now? Sure. So, so specifically Grand Forks, what happens is it gets collected curbside or a depot. It gets bailed here. They, they bale it, they separate the fibers in the containers, they bale it. Um, it goes to Kelowna where it gets an initial sort and then it goes to a container recovery facility that was built um, specifically for this where they're able to separate them into different materials. Is that in Kelowna also? Uh, no, it's in, uh, it's in New Westminster. Urban Impact? Uh, no, it's uh, it's not urban impact. Okay. It's um, it's uh, Merlin Plastics. Okay. Um, so they're able to separate them into aluminum, tin, glasses separated. Um, 
high quality glass is able to be turned back directly into other glass, which they do in, uh, in um, Washington State. And some of the lower qu quality glass, where there's a lot of contamination, gets brought to uh, Quinell, where it's turned into sandblasting material. So they're able to industrially clean uh, metals and things like that. Did, did that answer your question? Pretty close. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, yeah? Um, I've been told in the past, even though we were told to recycle glass, that glass here in Grand Forks, because it's so expensive to transport it, has actually ended up in the landfill. Is that going to be happening? Um, so, uh, so glass is, so glass is, I've heard, you know, I have a, I have a, a degree in strategic sustainability, so I try to look at things in a, a very scientific viewpoint. And glass is, is essentially inert. So glass is never going to hawk, harm the environment in, in terms of, it's like a stone. It's not, it's not going to harm the environment where plastic or, or paper or any <coughs> organic potentially has impact. So wherever a piece of glass is, as long as you don't get cut on it, is not going to be a problem. And, and I've heard environmentalists say the best thing to do with glass is throw it in the landfill. So, so that's not what we think, or sorry, I shouldn't say that, that's not what we think. That's not our approach. So a number of places in the province, I believe Vernon being one of them, a landfill, one of the problems with landfills is that they need to get air, air throughout the, the, the landfill to be able to have the material break down. So a lot of places will take glass and crush it and use it to go throughout the landfill to create those barriers to allow it to go. And because it's an inert, it's not a bad thing. Other places where glass, they can crush it up and use it for uh, road fill and things like that. So, so, and that's one of those things that is, you know, you, we could spend a week arguing whether glass is bad or not. I don't really have a, a point about it. We want glass to turn back into glass. That's what we want. We want perfect glass so we can turn it back into glass. Some of the other things, if the, if the glass isn't clean enough, it may have secondary uses. Um, and that's all we have to, you know, we're, we're a pretty open, organization where we basically we can't do anything other than recycle anything that we don't recycle we have to get permission to do so in some cases there's regional districts and Vernon I think was one of them that requested hey we want that glass for our landfill because otherwise they'd have to pay for glass so they're like we want it are we allowed to put glass balls in that recycling container no and the, and the reason why, so, and I'll get into materials specifically later, okay. but, and it was in the video, glass, styrofoam, and, um, and, plast and plastic bags, plastic film, cause lots of problems in, throughout the program. And, and I can basically explain why, something like styrofoam, super light, but it, it breaks very easily. So this breaking and getting, getting with the other material can cause real problems for the actual recyclability. So we're not in the collection business, we're in the recycling business. So something like this, and I don't want to break it because it will cause problems in the library and I won't be invited back. So I won't do that. But some, so something like that, we, we want it because it's very recyclable and they can, they can uh, heat this up and shrink it, take the air out of it, and shrink it down 100 to 1. So it's very uh, practical, very relatively valuable material, um, but it has to, be, has to be dealt with separately. But Bill, currently the only place we can get rid of that is we drive out to the dump. Right. Yeah. My, you know, from a practical point of view, my suggestion is what really happens or going forward is that whatever you don't take goes in the garbage. Right. Well... So I'm hoping to change that. I'm hoping to have a more local, central location well, for we used that. Used to have one. The city took it out. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, again, I can't speak for the city, but I, I have driven by those those bins and there, there was a lot of contamination. And there, I agree, but from a practical point of view, what we don't put in your blue boxes goes in the garbage. In the garbage. Yeah. Well, I mean, somewhere unless you give it to the mayor. Are there restrictions on what we can put in the garbage, too? No. no. That's worth a glass of <laughs> no. So, the issue is, is one of the things about our program that I think is a real strength, you could argue differently, is that we try to have the same rules across the province. So for the smallest town, the furthest away, we have the same rules as we do for... So some of our, some of our material might... So we get, say, I'm going to say $300 a ton to make up a number. Some of the material we have to ship over by barge and that some of the material it might cost us two thousand dollars per ton to get the material and get it processed or whatever. So um, and and part of that is that we, we tried to take a, a look at the, over the whole province and say this is what it's cost. So so if you're in a remote community, often I was talking with someone that lives in a small island in in uh, North of Vancouver Island, and they have to pay fifty cents a pound just to ship their food to their to their their place. For us, if we were taking out recycling, we we do it for free. Did, that didn't really answer your question. So what I'll say is, what I suggest to do is, when you're going there anyway, save up that material. Well, I don't go there. Yeah. Okay. It's well, so like I said, it's not convenient. It's we're, not convenient. We're working on trying to get. We're working on trying to get um, a more local. If I got to go there, then the city can take me off their taxes for the garbage pickup, and I'll do it all. Yeah, these are things that he, you know, he can't deal with. I mean, That's you're right. asking him questions, you're pointing, pointing out things that he has no control over. Yeah. But you really have to talk to just the, the district or the city about it. The garbage mm -hmm. is a separate business from this type of recycling. Yeah. I mean, you know. If we took it in curbside, for example, which, you know, if we were all about convenience, the problem is, is that that material would potentially make everything that we collect un unrecyclable. You couldn't have a separate bag or something? <laughs> well, th then you're getting into, so, our, so the trucks that you'll see that come by, it, it has two, so it has not, two, right now it has two compartments. About the service. What's that? So it's not about service. Uh, it's more about practicality. Right. Yeah. 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 But practicality from your side, not from the user's side. Yeah. You you know potentially our trucks could have thirty bins. I've that, never it, had my garbage dumped on my truck lawn before. Well, you you, you want to elaborate? Then? I went out with my with my bins that right. I was told had to be curbside by 8 a.m. Right. Didn't arrive till 10:30. Right. But I was out there and right. I watched them dump my neighbor's bin onto their front lawn, and they had phoned down the trail, got said that I could go. You guys dumped it on their front lawn. Then he came to my bins. I had all the different things that I had. You dump things out onto my lawn. And so I you're talking it. recyclable? Yes, recyclable? and I mean, how, how much more can you be recyclable when you look at a bag and it has the emblem of recycling on it right. and you throw that back so, on the lawn? So, so the trick is that what you call the recycling symbol mm -hmm. is it's actually a rosin coat. So what, what that means is that it, it will indicate what type of plastic it is. Now the, the crazy rules about recycling is that if there's some place in the world where something can be recycled, you can put that symbol on. Anywhere in the world, if, if Bangladesh will take a piece of recycling, you can put that. So it's a totally unregulated system. But the, that emblem is significant that I went on Google and um, it means because you didn't take it, I know there's different layers in my dog's food bag right, now. Exactly. You aren't capable of recycling everything. That's right. You're a big company. If you're BC, 
Saskatchewan, Ontario, Manitoba, but you're not capable of all recycling. That's true. So, yeah. but, but so, so, so like I said, now we're getting into materials, mm -hmm. and I can segue to materials if you want. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> okay, so can I can I take this? Sure. So, so this here, that has an eighty-one. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, how can it's you? It's a Mobius loop, isn't it? Yeah. So, so what that means? That's a rosin coat. So pretty well, anything that's recyclable in a rosin coat is going to be six or lower. And how are we as normal citizens supposed to know that? You do now. Yeah. I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Education. So, so, I know that this is going so, in my garbage. Is that paper? No, it's, it's a multi-laminated. It's a plastic. So if you, if you look at our, at our um, handout, it explains a lot of the details, and I'm here to help educate some of those. So, so I, I can basically show you the difference, and, it, and it, so, this, so if you hear that, that's what we call crinkly plastic. So um, what a multi-laminate is, is it's a material that is many layers of plastic, and its purpose is to either keep something dry or keep the air out. So any type of plastic, one type of plastic, it can't properly keep air out because the molecules are not able to align up exactly. And I'm not a material scientist. And so what a multi-laminate does, so you've got these holes, what it, what it kind of does is cover those holes so that it's able to keep air or water out. <coughs> And so if you look at specifically a material like this, it actually has flecks of aluminum in there to help with that. So, if, so what it does is it allows it to have a long shelf life, which is great if you're selling Kit Kat bars or if, or if you're having it on your, on your shelf or if you're buying dog food. That's what, what the purpose of it is. Something that is just regular plastic Will, will only keep a shorter shelf life. So um, manufacturers, they're, they're, the money that they want to have something to have a long shelf life. You know, if you're selling potato chips, you don't want someone to buy potato chips and two weeks later, they're no good. Some, so on, on the hierarchy of where an organization wants material to be, um, you know, in their priority, recyclable is like fifth on the list, you know. There's shelf life, there's, you know, something like uh, shiny, like that. That's going to make you want to buy it more. That's a higher priority, you know, the image than actually the recyclability. Now, there are businesses that that is their priority. But very few that are working in those organizations are like that. Is that piece that you just showed us, is that actually recyclable? Or where does it go? So something like this. It's garbage that. This here, just, the, I mean, this would probably be a product anyway, So, but it's very unlikely that they would be able to recycle that successfully. Right. So when you have things that, that are layered, that you were looking at that. Yeah. So that bag. So I. So part of our mandate is to work on, on um, dealing with with those type of things to be able to have them recycled. And and I don't know. I I'm confident we will be able to do that. But even if we do that, it will never be available on the curbside that will be something that will have to go to a depot because of how it has to be processed separately than everything else. Well, expanding it on that crinkly plastic, I, did, well, I thought I asked you earlier about the containers for muffins and stuff. Right. They're expanded plastic. Right. They won't take those either. Because okay. Mine. So now, so then I'm going to switch to materials now. If Just before we leave that, <coughs> watch today whether he looked in 
outside of mine, but it's just going to happen to a lot of us. Does he want to see what's on, on the bottom so he's going to throw it in? Okay, so. Was was going that done in, so, so we have. That, was that done in Greenwood? No, done not. Oh, okay. So we in we have. Grand Fork. Mm -hmm. What what we have what, what we have here is there's going to we have three what we call oop stickers. So the purpose of them is to really to, to help educate what mistakes there are. Okay, and and I can say, you know, the drivers. I, I, I went out for a couple hours with the drivers. They're being very diligent and they're trying to do it as a positive to educate you. Okay, they're trying. What they're trying to say is this stuff here in this bunch of stuff is acceptable this stuff here isn't acceptable and hopefully they left this to say why and th and the reason why is that we want we want to recycle everything we can but we can't recycle things that we can't recycle so what you don't recycle where do we put it in the garbage, in the garbage. garbage. Yeah. well the, the reality so is that if we, we took that before. it's going to end up in the garbage anyway that's yeah. the reality Yep. Only difference is we end up by having to buy more making... stickers because we can only have one garbage bag. Yeah. And I can put it out every week. Mm -hmm. And every two weeks. Every no, two weeks. every week in town. Mm -hmm. No, just every second every, week. Every no, second. You put out the compost yeah. every week. I'll just you speak to that if you don't mind. I'm with, that out every week. No. I'm with Alpine, and it is true the regional district has contracted Alpine to pick up your compost and your garbage, and they've uh, provi provided weekly garbage collection. Yeah. So yeah. you can oh. actually put out compost and garbage weekly now, which really? is different than it was. Oh. Yeah, which big, is different than it was plus. before, but that yeah. that is big that plus. is true. Okay? Great. That's great. Tip bit of information we didn't have. I know what it says, but it's we take garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every week. Yeah. And then food scraps. Have you not got to do that? The food scraps. Yeah. Once a month. So, I'm, I, like I said, unfortunately, that will that will never be from in our program. Will never be a curbside accepted material. It may in future get recycled, but it won't be part of the curbside material. And and I, and you know the the idea of you know like I said the guys working the trucks they're working very hard they're separating this the material in order to recycle things properly but also to help to show you okay maybe you better reread that and hopefully or hopefully I can answer a lot of those questions about the material that that is acceptable yeah here okay so if there are only two bins then uh, can we put <coughs> and we have a lot can we put paper and say tin cans in one bin or does it have no. to be separate so the so how i have the tables here is basically how the bins are so essentially in the one bin is essentially fiber meaning paper cardboard and basically paper type stuff and and i looked at 100 bins or i probably looked at 500 bins in the last uh, week and I haven't seen anyone that really confused the paper aspect. The only thing that I do want to point out is, and I took this as one an example, is that, and and is that something like this, the biggest cardboard that we can take is 30 inches by 30 inches. So essentially, this in half. And the reason why is has to do with the truck as well. So so if you look at the truck. Um, and if you see the truck come by, it's what we call an over-the-top truck. It's a, it has a split body, meaning that um, the fibers are in the front and the containers are in the back. And they, they essentially put it um, into a, a slotted bin. And then when they can, they, they, that bin tips over and goes into, into the, the different bodies of the truck. So something like this can be very problematic. So all you have to do is just basically fold it in half again so it's easier to work with and if it doesn't fit your bin all you have to do is just put it beside the bin like that. And, and, and if you can think about it they're they're typically they're collecting how many households oh we on on the run that was done today we collect from probably 
600 households Six, on average. Okay, so 600 households on average. So you, you can imagine if the person that shows up to, to come to your house has to spend 10 seconds to sort out whatever materials are. That makes for a very long work day. Yeah. But, but didn't you say that the trucks only have two compartments? That's right. So what we have sorted out, they are jumbling up because they only have two compartments. Right, so, so fibers is one compartment and then everything else is containers, okay? So in containers we can take tin, we can take aluminum, no, it's not aluminum, but, but, but we can take what we call spiral round, which is basically a metal and paper. We can take that. And the reason why it was in the video, when it gets to the plant, that can be separated by the magnets. Mm -hmm. So there's big, huge magnets separated. Boom, it goes in with, with the... Uh, with the oh, with the metal. So yeah, yeah. So the the plastic lid is recyclable, but it's helpful if you just take it off. So just take it off and keep it separate. The, it'll get it'll get separated probably in the plant anyway. But anytime you take the lids off is a, is a good thing because um, if there's any extra liquid or whatever, it'll drain out and not cause any problem in the long run. So, best best idea is to take the lids off, everything. You said you can leave the paper on, cans and bottles. So, so in those cases, spiral. Yeah. So, you, so you can leave it on. Yeah. All we ask is just rinse it out. However, the re the way that this actually gets recycled is is it'll get burnt, so it won't actually get recycled. So, if you want the if you want it to be recycled, just essentially. Peel the label and put that in your papers, and that will those will get recycled in those two separate scenarios. Have you got a big supply of blue boxes where I live? There's lots of homeless people, and they find them very attractive. Yeah. So, so good point. So one thing that I recommend doing maybe is write your uh, write your address on it. Um, which might help. I don't think it make any difference to that. Group. Well, so you can, um, I, I, you can order an, uh, a couple, but you're only entitled to a certain amount um, per year, basically. But if, if you if you don't have the bins, you can also put it into a Rubbermaid container or other other ones as well. What do you do with glass jars with labels? Okay. Okay. So so glass. So now we'll get into. Um, so glass is not acceptable in the curbside. So I said the three things that aren't accepted in curbside is glass, film, and styrofoam. <laughs> and the reason why glass isn't acceptable is that it can break, it can, it can um, injure the, the people working on the line, and it also uh, can break up and contaminate all the other materials. And it also is really hard on the machinery. Anything that has glass will wear out four times faster. So we want to get it out of the system as quickly as possible. And if all we get is glass, it's a very high quality material, which we can convert right back directly into glass, one to one pretty well. So we definitely want glass. So something like the paper label, we're not worried about it. It will get burnt though. In the in the process, and, the and and in fact, they say that some of that carbon actually helps the quality of the glass, oh. as I understand. It. So, so, so it's not a big deal. You're saying you want glass then? Like we do want glass, glass, but not curbside. Not curb. So where do you want it? Uh, well, at the at the at the <laughs> landfill right oh, now. Yeah. So film, foam, and glass is what we want there. Okay. But we can't put all those things in a garbage bag. Sure. Bill, is it possible, I noticed today, we had our first pickup today, and we were one of the ones that had everything dumped out, and a little oops tag on it. I might have been one of those people that did that, just and, so and we're clear. possible, okay, there's a learning curve, I understand that. Is it possible to get different containers? The reason I say that, these are awfully small, and they have no lids. Right. So one of the things that we're looking at is, um, so... It cost us considerable expense to buy these 
buy these um, bins. Buy bigger ones. So, so however, we found that these are uh, have been worked quite well, and I, and I'm a bit I'm a bit kind of mystified that almost every bin I saw was was full yeah. in, in the past yeah. week, and I'm hoping that that will go down. I don't know if if everyone here is a big consumer. If we've got wet weather or snow, they're going to be right. Ugly. So real, so real as long as long as the material is separated and kept properly, the I mean we don't we definitely don't want to have weather. You know it's a bad thing, but the reality is that once it once it goes up to the uh, baler, it just the water gets squished out. It's not a really a big deal. And in fact. <coughs> The processing, in some cases, they actually want the water. But when I got to take those cans, those boxes back into my house, I got to clean them up. Oh yeah. Well, I if it's if it's water, or the dogs are, are you know going down the street are going to find them. Um, all I'm suggesting is that there's got to be better containers. I right. went out and bought two Rubbermaid containers today, which have a label right. that have lids on them. Right. And because we have raccoons, skunks, etc. So so one of the so. Part of the difficulty when you're dealing with 600 households a day or whatever is that having to take off those lids can add to that time. One of the things that we are looking at is is getting uh, lids for these specific ones. And I don't have one here, but I have one in my house. But they'll they'll probably end up costing somewhere in the nature of five dollars each. Would that be of interest if we well, had those I just bought two rubbermaid garbage cans for nine dollars and ninety five cents. Each at uh, Walmart. Okay. Mine so, so what, what? What? Pardon me. Mine stay outside. Right. They're going to get soaked with yeah. rain. Right. So, so I'm, on I'm looking for a lid. Okay. Locally. So, like I said, one. Of, it's just something mm -hmm. that I happened to see uh, like two weeks ago. I saw them specifically. I was talking with the manufacturers of these bins, and they had these lids. So, I have one. And I'm going to now bring it to our office when I get there next week. And show them said I think we should maybe make these available. Are there holes in the bottom? Yes. Yeah, so there are holes in the bottom. Yeah, yeah exactly. they can drain. Yeah, they can drain. Yeah. yeah. But you can't. So I so in answer to your question, we we have had them across the province for the last three years, and it's worked so far. So some of the things like paper or whatever. You know, if it gets really windy, you say we'll put the paper kind of like stack. You can stack your boxes so that um, some of those issues won't happen. I've seen, you know, because I, I travel across the province, I've seen some incredibly clever ideas that people have come up with, made, you know, little like doghouse for their recycling bins or whatever, you know. <laughs> so, I want to have a, you know, a, a photo contest. <laughs> To, to room, you know, so I, I have lots of pictures that I can show you on my computer of that kind of thing. So, so then you don't necessarily have to use these recycled bins? No. So can you, can you have more than two? Absolutely. Example? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as the material is, is as it should be, you can have as many as you want. You know, you know so I saw places today that had seven or eight. Yeah. Hmm. Well, would it be too much to ask if, if the driver doesn't accept the material at least to put it back in the bin and not dump it on your lawn? Yeah, so... Or does that take too much time? Yeah, so typically that, that is what happens. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it's maybe something that can be addressed for sure. If I yeah. ever found them again, I would address yeah. them again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can say what I do. Is typically I'll take the material and put it down, maybe on the lawn, but I'll turn the bin over top of it to stop it from blowing out. Is that would that be okay? Soft bins. I mean, you know, the thing is, you know, you want us to take the time to put the paper in right to make sure it doesn't blow away. We don't work for this recycled BC, but we pay for it. But you well, well, you don't actually for pay too. for it. Well, somebody's paying for it. Yeah. The, so, so <laughs> one of the so um, for for a company to to pay into our program. So for something like this, they pay somewhere in the nature of. I'm going to say. Point zero one, of a cent. So. So they pay a hundredth of a cent. They pay us for the for the recycling of this material. So they, 
it's not, they're not gonna turn around and charge you an, an extra nickel for this. They just, they, you know, it cuts in that 0.01% of their profit. And they, and they <coughs> accept that as a cost of doing business. So you're not really paying for it, they're actually paying for it. And the reason why I say this, you know, I work for the company, but I, you know, I do believe that what we're doing is the right thing because um, I think we might be getting ready to, okay. Uh, question what you next. Yeah, okay. So I do believe that we're doing the right thing. We're the point where in the U.S. where there are recycling, you know, programs that are run by municipalities in city, big cities that are bank, going bankrupt. They, they come up to my managing director like he's a rock star at these presentations because they want to know what are you guys doing right? How can we do that? You know, because it's not costing the residents. Can I just ask a few more questions on what you can recycle? I see you have a lot of tin foil there. Right. The last time, or one of the times I was looking through recycling, they said no tin foil. They said no, you know how our coffee cans go with the foil? They said not that. Is that still the same or is that changed? So I can't say specifically without seeing it. The material if it's aluminum like this this is exactly what you should do with it okay mm -hmm. and the reason why is that gets picked up by the magnets mm -hmm. okay so also, it's, if it's like that but it's dirty okay but right, let's say it's, it's so rinse. so I always try to think what actually happens to it try to clean it up as much as possible I've seen crows I've seen raccoons get into recycling right. if crows or raccoons are getting in your recycling there's a you've done something wrong okay. <laughs> so something like that um, they're going to take it, they're going to melt it down, they're going to burn it. So a little bit of, you know, chicken parmesan or whatever, that will be fine. about the coffee foil things that come I mean, if you can feel that it's it's actually... I think like that silver plastic. I can't say without really seeing it. I suspect that it's a multi-laminate, though. I suspect it's a multi-laminate that has aluminum in it. What about uh, these... Tin foil side plates that you get from the store. Where did they go in recycle? Got, got one here. So I do have one. Here. Oh. Ah, so like that? Yep, yeah, that just goes in with your containers. <coughs> okay. Yep, so you can crumple that up or you can stay. It's heavy enough that the magnets will pick that okay. up. If you crumple it up, it's better, but you, you don't okay. have to. Yeah, exactly. So, so there's new things that we've added to the program, for example, flower pots. Right, so we can take anything up to 20 liter. Um, in which bin? Uh, containers. So basically, paper containers, and it's and it's all in the all in the instructions. Um, so, um, so this is something I, I grabbed. So all this stuff, pretty well, I either grabbed it um, this past few weeks. What I saw is like, okay, that'll be a good example. Or Kelly nicely brought in some stuff. So here's something that. Um, uh, is uh, shredded paper, right? So if shredded paper, this is exactly what you want to do. Just put it in a box like that. That will get recycled. Okay? Something like this. So something that just came out for, for this year um, is, um, I, like I said, all of, almost all of our containers get recycled in British Columbia or in in North America. Our fibers, since they closed down the, the fiber plant, the paper making plant, um, six years ago, in the whole, there's none here. So all of our fiber gets shipped overseas. So, and, and uh, China brought a, um, uh, basically a hammer down that they call the national sword where they only allow a 1% contamination rate for fiber. So it's something that we're having to be super diligent about. So typically our program, we allow a 3% contamination rate. We've had to be going, being extra diligent about fibers. So what do you call con contamination on paper? So, I, I mean, te technically something like this, okay. something like this would be not paper, so okay. that would be something. But really, 
we're talking about things like this getting into the plastics. Right. Those are more the big ones. That so everything at that table there is going to have to go to the dump. So everything like this either gets taken to the depot or to the dump. Okay. What about uh, small pieces of wood, things like that? Do you take that at all? So no, no. So wood is, wood is an organic compound, so we don't really want anything organic other than paper. So no wood. So the, the, the big ones that we don't want are any products. So something like this, something like this, or... And this is something that confuses people, things like this, okay? And so this may or may not be recyclable. I don't know what type of plastic it is, and, but it, the reason why it's not recyclable in our program is, is that they haven't paid into the program, okay? So our program as mandated by the province is about packaging and printed paper. So, so things like this are a product whether it's a toy, whether it's this, whether it's this. And these were things that I pulled out of um, recycling today. These, these are not recyclable in our program. On the note of um, not paying into the program, would you address American bottles right. and cans? And yes, thank you very much. No. So the other <laughs> aspect of, of, of it, and I know that the Bottle Depot gets the problem as well here. Um, American products are not paying into our program, so, so they're not recyclable in our program. So if you buy something in the US and want to support their economy, they have systems in place to take it back there, and, and that's what we recommend that you do with that. Sometimes at the library, we have to recycle books or get rid of books that have water damage and potential mold issues. So in the past, we've been told to, if it's a hard cover, to cut off the cover and put that separate um, into the garbage and then just recycle the pages. What would you like with um, recycled PC books? So, so books is one that um, upsets me, but books is not part of our program. Okay. And the reason why is they aren't paying into the program yes. because it's not packaging or printed paper. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so but magazines are magazines are, newspapers are, anything like that. Mm -hmm. But books, there are a number of, you know, there are a number of organizations that take it, unfortunately. Yeah. But unfortunately, I don't see a lot of books. <laughs> paper packaging, uh, paper products, like some of those cups there uh, that are multi-laminate or, or let's say wax coated yeah. or whatever, are those allowed to or not? Yes, so, so, so anything like any any container goes in the containers. So this here, well, I'm gonna rip this open. This here, I don't know if people can see it's shiny. It probably has either a plastic coating or more likely a, a wax paper. That goes in with the containers. Okay. Some some are pure paper, they still go in with the containers. Styrofoam cups? So styrofoam cups goes where? In the the garbage. Garbage. No, it goes. It goes to the recycle depot. Okay. So any 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 uh, of these go in the back. Yeah. I can't speak for that, sir. Well, I, I hope that the recycle depot there is right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So there are. This is where we get into the nuances, which is what I hope to really cover. There are some that are not acceptable. Um, that are not styrofoam technically and, and this is stuff that I did get at the dump. So this here is a spray foam and and the reason why if, if you think of how our material gets processed the styrofoam gets heated up and it just gets shrunk, the air gets taken out it gets shrunk down. This here has a bunch of toxins if that ended up with the system they, I've heard stories of where they had had to evacuate the building for, for something specifically of that, of this uh, spray foam installation. So this is true garbage from our point of view. We will never try to get this recyclable because for one, it's a problem. It's not packaging. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So the single serving cup, coffee cup, things like the Keurigs and stuff like that, they're not recyclable. They are, they are recyclable, yep. Okay. Yep, they go in the containers. Okay. Yeah. Oh. What about the wax on uh, the soap, the plastic, there's a paper, and, but it's a little waxy. Do, what, are you, is that acceptable? Um, like I mean, wax paper, you mean? So, no, so something that it, has it, an outside, it's it, paper outside it, it's for paper, soap? It's paper, but there, it feels like there's a little <coughs> to it. Like it'll be the inner yes. wrapping around the soap that's right. that protects the paper outer wrapping. So I the suspect soap. that that's a multi laminate. Yeah. So oh, I okay. so I suspect it's some version like of this, and it's not recyclable. Okay. Yeah. But I but I know that there is a lot of soap that come in something like this that would be recyclable. Okay. What about um, and even, even if it has a has the um, a little. Uh, like envelope, like a mirror, uh, like a window. Uh, that's it's actually some form of of uh, of paper based. I'm trying to think the word, but paper based. So it's it probably is it's recyclable as well. And if it was plastic on the outside, does it depend on the plastic on, for example, the soap? So best thing to do with those kind of things, it's probably going to be a soft plastic yes. like this. Best thing to do is when you take it to the depot, just ask them. Okay. Okay. But I can say it's like I could I, I could probably tell you, but unless I had it to look at it. Right. But I say essentially it has to do with I do a lot of what how it sounds like. So that is is going to be recyclable. Or in this case, it has a zipper, so that zipper would have to be removed. So that would be recyclable. So Something bag. like this would not be. So Ziploc bag, you take the cut off the, the So a typical card. Ziploc bag, and I think I have one here. So a Ziploc bag would be, an actual bought one would be a considered a product, so it wouldn't come under our program. In that particular case is actual packaging, so that would be acceptable. Curbside? Uh, no, at the, at the depot. Yeah. And it's all, in, it's all in your guide as well. What about yeah. that aerosol can? Oh, uh, yeah, so exactly. So aerosol cans are acceptable. <coughs> and I have two here. So that's acceptable as long as they're empty, okay? The only ones that aren't are things like propane, okay? <laughs> so, so that would be the ideal way to separate those uh, like that. However, um, paint like this would not be. So paint, there is a, can be taken to the uh, bottle depot, I believe. No, sorry. So paint, sorry, my mistake. So paint is not acceptable even if it was empty. There is a, there is a, a stewardship program for paint. So, but paint would not be acceptable on curbside. And, and or, or propane, or any type of compressed gas. And I could say last year, in across Canada, there were four explosion slash fires that happened in in uh, material recovery facilities due to propane <coughs> getting bailed and as it was compressed caught fire and blew up and caused serious da damage multi-million dollar damage and people being injured so we take that very seriously so the containers for things like antifreeze windshield washer oil that type of stuff Exactly. So those are not. So I have one here. Okay, and it's in the guide. It would not be acceptable. And it says specifically anything with the the uh, labels here would not be acceptable. With the witness symbols. Uh, yeah, with the <laughs> skull and crossbones or the fire. Right. Uh, an empty one quart oil can. Yeah. Oil. So there there are um, places that will take them. But we will not take them on curbside, and that's because they're not—they don't pay into it. Is that? Uh, no. Well, they have their own stewardship program, but also because it would contaminate everything else. Mm -hmm. So, what about plastic bags then that you collect at the grocery store, like so, that you put your produce in? The clear plastic bags. <clears throat> so those ones. No, no, but clear ones, right? Like that you. Yeah. So those those would probably be okay. Yeah. Yeah. So all you do is just take those and loosely bring them to the depot. Yeah. So those, the ones I'm thinking of that, that you buy, you know, like grapes or stuff in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put your but grapes in. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that would be. So not in the that bins. That is recyclable. That is recyclable, but not curbside. But not curbside. Okay. Yeah. 
It is the people that keeps getting me confused because it's so crowded. And so, so this Ziploc bag, this would not be acceptable from our viewpoint for two reasons. One is it's a product, and two is it's a multi-laminated material. Okay? Where this one here, that other one I had, actually was a different, that's a different type of material. Uh, the other thing that I saw is, is what we call um, unsortable. Okay, and this is someone, well in this case this actually isn't recyclable, but let's say that this was filled with little other stuff that was recyclable and it's put in into here. This would not actually end up being recycled because they don't know what's in there. They're not, when it goes on the line, they're just going to take it and, and throw it out. It's going to go to the landfill. Mm -hmm. So people are trying to do the right thing maybe. In this case, that stuff is un, unlikely to be re actually recyclable. But, but um, if you're going to have things, the best thing to do with um, you know, with everything, rinse it out, clean it like that. If you want to collapse it, that would save the drivers uh, a lot of time because they don't have a compression truck. So if you want to collapse it, you can, but you, you're not required to do that. But you can see the difference if every one of those was was uh, collapsed, how much more efficient the that would be. Collapse. Well, that's what you just step on. It. A lot it's of not mine. Step on it. A lot of broken angles. And heels. That's all that's required. Yeah. Yeah. And you're a young fellow. That so. probably broke somebody's toe. <laughs> well, like I said, it's not required to, to do. So, so Bill, we can take a few more minutes before we'll need to start wrapping up. Okay. So, just so everybody knows. Yeah. I had a question about, I see you've got light bulbs there. Right. So, light, light bulbs, that's light bulbs. Uh, beverage glass, this would be considered a product. And there's also, I believe there's other things that make it not recyclable from our point of view. There is a program that will take light bulbs. At the bottle depot, we'll take light bulbs. And, um, and then other things that are not acceptable are any other, this type, what we call squishy foam. That's the technical term, if you're wondering. <laughs> squishy foam is not recyclable in our program. And um, just um, acoustic foam is not recyclable in our program. The only thing that is, is styrofoam. And it has to be white? It, it can be colored or white. It has to go to the depot and they're, and they're collected separately. Well, how come, the, how come you differentiate like that? Why won't you pick up things curbside and say they have to go to the depot? So the, the reason why is that um, they can cause problems in the process <coughs> so for example this here these if they're if they're brought in curbside whatever if it goes into the, the, the any of the any of the facilities that recycle them what happens is these get caught up in all the gears and typically every every four hours they have to shut down you know multi-million dollar plants that 50 people are working on and shut them down for 15 to 20 minutes to clear these out. Well, doesn't the depot have the same problem when they uh, No, because it's all kept separate. They're kept totally separate from everything else. And they expect to be able to deal with that, so their process stream is yeah. designed that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing is, you know, if it's all kept separately, they will get recycled separately. These are these are quite valuable. And there's, and there's I mean, right now Victoria is looking at banning these because they're problematic in other ways you know so I, I'm not I'm not saying one way or the other whether that's a good thing I'm just saying there are a lot of places that are banning these can I take curbside like materials that are accepted curbside can they also be taken to the depot yes they can yeah okay so if I find it easier to ins for instance just take all my plastics and all my curbside to the depot at once I can do that uh, yeah I mean absolutely from my point of view, that's a bad thing because I'm now, we're having to pay for that material twice. So we pay for, for it to be collected curbside, plus now we're having to pay for the weight of it. So from our point of view, we discourage that. However, if you're gonna recycle it, great. I'm just thinking, I think my apartment building specifically, I don't think does offer curbside recycling. So I can take curbside materials out to the depot. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. 
it's our problem too. Okay, one last question for you for me. Uh, when the brochures that were sent out in the mail, the blue, wherever, you had some mm -hmm. over there. And the lady that's holding one right there, it's in plastic wrap. Yeah. And yeah. we can't recycle it. Why no, you, you can recycle it. doing that? You can recycle it. You can recycle at it the at the depot. At the depot. Yeah. 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 It's a <laughs> well, so again, the same way as a business that puts potato chips in a multi-laminate, they want it to protect it. We put it in something that is recyclable and it protects it. Only it's not recyclable curbside. That means I've got to save up a whole bunch of stuff. Fortunately, I still drive, so I can make a trip out to the landfill. Right. Well, we want and you I to I wonder why, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. of all people, you would include another product that is just a on the system. Well, it isn't a blight. From our point of view, that's a, that's very recyclable. That's a positive. Only class. if we can make our way out to the landfill. Well, and that's the problem here is that there's the a lot of people that they, that don't, they drive don't, that don't drive. There's a lot of older folks um, that <clears throat> don't have, uh, you know, like Handy Dart is not going to start taking a trip to the dump for <laughs> one of the day trips. <laughs> it's not exactly a highlight of where you want to go. Exactly. <laughs> but there's a lot of people that are not going to be able to do this. The place but, in the but depot there's is always allowed to been stuff that Oh that yeah, you know that. To take to the dump. I mean, so as I said, the, the program before this this material might have been picked up before in the curbside. But it's very unlikely that it was actually recycled. Right. We want to recycle things. So I, I think the problem is you're, you're highly selective, you know, for, for curbside. That's the problem. You know, you, you should include the same things that you take at the recycle depot in the curbside. So, so what, I, I, what I tried to do is explain why why that can't be done. Yeah. Because one contaminates the other. Exactly. Yeah. One the, the problem is that it, that it, 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 it's, you know, if they're separate, then they can be recycled. If they're together, they're unlikely either one of them potentially is going to be recycled. I had got to go, but you made recycling so simple. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Tell, yeah. tell all your thank friends. You. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, for coming up tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I really, uh, you know, to take it to heart. You know, we, uh, you know, we we work really hard to try to make our program better. Please look at our website, and you can get a lot more details than than I can. Thank you all.